Hello everyone. This setup isn't really working for me anymore. That's better. New camera, new microphone. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, enough messing. Today I'm going to show you how to restore old photographs using Photoshop. Let's get started. To begin, I'm going to make a judgement call on how big I actually make this image. From the original photo, I think 6x4 would work, so I've got this image moved into a document with those measurements and transformed it to fill the area. Step 1 in any restoration piece, always, always, always work on new layers. That way you don't accidentally work on your original photo and end up making changes that you can't undo in the future. I'm so careful about this, I actually duplicate my layer, stick it into a folder and hide it so I don't ever make this mistake. Step 2. On a new layer, you're going to flip between using both the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool. First, make sure that you're sampling all layers. Click that checkbox on the top toolbar if you're not. Now with the soft brush, go along the cracks of the photo with the healing brush tool, paint over them and what you'll find is the cracks start to disappear. If you notice that the image is becoming a little smudged, switch to your clone stamp tool, sample an area close to where you want to fix by holding Alt and clicking, then move your brush over the area to be corrected and paint. Again, be careful not to paint too much or bring over information that shouldn't be in that particular part of the photo. This is usually the most important step in photo restoration. It involves patience, a good eye for detail and lots and lots of practice. So if you're feeling like you're not quite getting it right away, just keep trying and building up your experience and skills. Step 3. Once you've fixed up your photo, now comes the fun part of bringing it back to life. At the minute this image is still very dated, it looks washed out and has a gold hue to it. Well you can either convert this to black and white now and bring back a little bit of sharpness to the image, or you can add a dash of colour, which is what I'm going to do. Go down to the adjustment layers, add a solid colour layer, and pick one that is going to be part of this image. In this case, I'm going to pick blue to be used in the sky. Next, change the blending mode to something like overlay and add a black layer mask, then paint white on the mask where you want the colour to be seen. Now you do have to remember this is a subtle technique to slightly add to the overall restoration of the photo. You can't go too strong on these colours, so make sure to lower the opacity of the solid colours layer in order to create that washed out look. Repeat this step for the rest of the photo, adding green grass, grey stone, and be aware that darker shades represent darker colours. Lighter shades represent lighter colours. Colouring things like clothing is a guessing game, but try and do some research. Check out when the photo was taken, Google some colour photos from that era, see what was in style, and try and colour based on the tones in the photo and what you think they would be wearing. Alternatively, if this is for a client, you could always ask them if they know. It pays to do your research. And here's a little tip for you. Human skin is not pink. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see most often when people are colorizing old photos. It's made up of multiple colors. Pinks, purples, reds, yellows, blues, browns, oranges. Spend some time building up a color palette for skins. That way, it'll make your restorations look more realistic. And finally, step four, finishing touches. At the minute, the photo has been restored and a little color added. Now we're going to add a bit more photoshopping work in order to make this really look good. Adding things like dodging and burning, sharpening and vignettes can help darken shadows and lighten your subject and add a bit of depth to your photo. Now this step is completely subjective. It can be very easy to go overboard with these techniques. So always take a break before finalizing your edits and come back with a fresh pair of eyes to see if you're still happy with what you've created. And that about wraps us up guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the little section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.